Hello, YouTubers. Today I will be reading. I'll be telling you guys a story. It's called the Gilfaginning, or or um or if we were to say that in actual English, um, here begins the beguiling of Gilfi. Here, here we go now. King Gilfi ruled the land that men now call Sweden. It is told of him that he gave to a wandering woman in return for a merrymaking a plow land in his realm, as much as four oxen might turn up in a day and a night. This woman was of the kin of the Asia. She was named G Githyun. She took from the north out of Jotunheim four oxen which were the which were the soils of a certain giant and herself, and set them before the plow. And the plow cut so wide and so deep that it loosened up the land. And the oxen drew the land out into the sea and to the, and to the westward, and stopped in a certain sound. There Gethyum set the land and gave it a name, calling it Siland. And from that time on, the spot whence the land had been torn up is water. It is now called the Loger in Sweden, and bays lie in that lake even at the headlands in Sealand. The says Bragi, the ancient skull. Githgun drew from Gilfi, Gilfi, gladly the wave troves freehold, till from the running beasts sweet, sweat reeks to Denmark's increase. The oxen bore, moreover, eight wise, gleaming brown lights. Oh, the fields wide booty, and foreheads in our plowing. King Githli was a wise man and skilled in magic. He was much troubled that the Aesir people were so cunning that all things weren't according to their will. He pondered whether this might proceed from their own nature, or whether the divine powers which they worshipped might ordain such things. He set out on his way to Asgard, going secretly, and clad himself in the likeness of an old man, with which he dissembled. But the Aesir were wiser in this matter, having second sight, and they saw his journeying before ever he came, and prepared against him deceptions of, his, of the eye. Then he came to the town, he saw there a hall so high that he could not easily make out the top of it, as thatching was laid with golden shields after the fashion of a shingled roof. So also says the old for of Finn, that Valhall was thatched with shields. On their backs they let beam, sore battered with stones, Odin's all shingles, the shrewd seafarers. In the hall doorway, Gifli saw a man juggling with anises, having seven in the air at one time. This man asked of him his name. He called himself Ganglary, and said he had come by the paths of the serpent, and prayed for lodging for the night, asking, Who owns the hall? The other replied that it was their king. And I will attend thee to see him. Then shalt thou my, thyself ask him concerning his name. And the man wheeled around before him into the hall, and he went after, and straightway the door closed itself on his heels. There he saw a great room and much people, some of them, well, some with game, some drinking, and some had weapons and were fighting. Then he looked about him, and thought unbelievable many things which he saw, and said, All the gateways here one goes out, should one scan, for tis it, for tis certain, uncertain, where sit the unfriendly on the bench before thee. He saw three high seats, each above the other, and three men sat thereon, one on each, and he asked that, and he asked what might be the name of those lords. He who had conducted him and answered, that the one who sat on the on the nethermost high seat was a king, and his name is Har, but next it is named Yanhar, and he who is uppermost is called Thridi. Then Har asked the newcomer whether his errand were more than for the meat and drink which were always at his command, as for every one there in the hall the high one. Yet he answered that he first desired to learn whether there were any wise men there within. Har said that he should not escape whole from thence, 
unless he were wiser. And stand thou forth, who spearest, who answers, he shall sit. Ganglary began his questioning thus, Who is foremost or oldest of all the gods? Har answered, He is called in our speech, Our Father, but in the Eldar Asgard he has twelve names. One is Our Father, the second is Lord, or Lord of Hosts, the third is Nikar, or Spear Lord, the fourth is Nikudr, or Striker, the fifth is Knower of many things, the sixth, Fulfiller of Wishes, the seventh, far, fair speaking one, the eighth, the Shaika, or he that putteth the armies to flight, the ninth, the Burner, the tenth, the Destroyer, the eleventh, the Protector, the twelfth, Gilding. Then asked Danglary, Where is this God? Or what power hath he? Or what hath he wrought that is a glorious deed? Har made answer, He lives throughout all the ages and governs all his realm and directs all things great and small. Then said Yafnar, He fashioned heaven and earth and air and all things which are in them. Then spake Thridri, The greatest of all is this, that he made man, and gave him the spirit, which shall live and never perish, though the flesh frame and rock to mold, or burn to ashes, and all men shall live. Such is our just in action. That is my cheesecake in there, in my fridge. Sorry for the little, but sorry for the pause there, but um, Raylan was just getting mad that someone ate her cheesecake. It wasn't me. No, no, no. No, wasn't me. It was somebody else. Now let's continue with the story. Okay. Who was I? Then said Yothenhar, he fashioned heaven and earth and heaven and all things which are in them. Then spake Thridi, the greatest of all is this. That he made man, it gave him the spirit, which shall live and never perish. What the fuck are you eating my cheesecake? Oh my. I ate your cheesecake. Oh my gosh. Why, Mom? That's why I saved you Come on. What? Why, Mom? Okay, let's continue okay. with this. <coughs> Such as are just in action, and be with himself in a place called Gimli, Gimli, but evil men go to hell, and thence down to the misty hell, and that is down in the ninth world. Then said Ganglary, what did he before heaven and earth were made? And Harset answered, he was then with the Rhine Giants. Ganglary said, what was the beginning, or how began it, or what was before it? Har answered, as, as is told in Velospa. Earth was an age where nothing was, nor sand, nor sea, no chilling stream waves. Earth was not found, nor other heaven, a yawning gape, but grass was gone with none. Then said Jafenhar, It was many ages before the earth was shaped that the mist world was made, and midmost within it lies the world that is called Heaven Gilmir, for which springs the rivers called Svo, Gunthra, Fjorn. Thimbleful, Sleater, and, and Hedder, and Hed, Sugar, and Vliger, Vid, Liptir, Yo, is hard by Elgates. And 3D said, Yet first was the world in the southern region, which was named Muspel. It is light and hot. That region is glowing and burning, and impassable to such as our outlanders, and I'm not there holding there. He who sits there at the land's end to defend the land is called Sutta. He brandishes a flaming sword. And at the end of the world he shall go forth in the hurry and overcome all the gods and burn all the world with fire. Thus is said in the Lespa, Sutta fares from the south with switch eating flame. On his sword shimmers the sun of the war gods. The rock crags crash. The fiends are reeling. Heroes tread hellway. Heaven is cloven. Ganglary asked, How are things wrought ere the races were and the tribes of men increased? Then said Har, The streams called ice waves, those which were so long come from the fountain heads that the yeasty venom upon them had hardened like the slag that runs out of the fire. 
These then become ice, and when the ice halted and ceased to run, then it froze over above. But the drizzling rain that rose from the venom congealed to rime, and the rime increased frost of frost each over the other, even into Ganungagap, the yawning vold, void. Then spake Yef, Yefnar, Ganungagap, which faced toward the northern quarter, became filled with heaviness and masses of ice and rime, and from within drizzling rain and gusts, but the southern part of the yawning void was lighted by those sparks and glowing masses which flew out of, of Muspelheim. And Thridi said, Just as cold rose out of Niflheim, and all terrible things, so also all that looked toward Muspelheim became hot and glowing. But Gap was as mild as windless air, and when the breath of heat met the rime, so that it melted and dripped, life was quickened from the yeast drops by the power of that which sent the heat and became a man's form. And that man is named Emir, but the rhyme giants called him Argemir. Argemir. And then are come the race of the rhyme giants. As it says in Velospa the Less, all the witches spring from Vilthvitl. All the warlocks are from Vilharm, and all the spell singers spring from Svothid. All the ogres have Ymir come. But concerning this, says Vyaftyonir the giant, after the ice waves issued venom drops, waxing until a giant was. Since our, our, our kindred come all together, so it is they are savage forever. And said Gagleri, How did the race grow thence? Or after what fashion was it brought to pass, then more men came into being? Or do ye hold him guard, of whom ye but now spake? And Yafnhars answered, By no means do we acknowledge him God. He was evil in all his kindred. We call them rhyme giants. Now it is said that when he slept, a sweat came upon him, and there grew under his left hand a man and a woman, and one of his feet begat a son. The other, thus the races are come. These are the rhyme giants. The old rhyme giant, him we call Ymir. Then said Ganglary, Where dwelt Ymir? Or wherein did he find sustenance? Har answered, Straightway after the rhyme dripped, there sprang from it a cow called Aldomlo. Four streams of milk ran from her odors, and she nourished Ymir. Then asked Ganglary, Wherewith was the cow nourished? And Har made answer, she licked the ice block, which were salty, and the first day that she licked the blocks, there came forth from the blocks in the evening a man's hair. The second day, a man's head. The, fir the third day, the whole man was there. He is named Burry. He was fair of feature, great and mighty. He begot a son called Boar, who wedded the woman named Bestla, daughter of Bothorn, the giant. They had three sons. One was Odin, the second Vili, the third Vey. And this is my belief, that he, Odin, with his brothers, must be ruler of heaven and earth, and who that he must be so called. So is that man called, whom we know to be mightiest and most worthy of honor, and ye do well to be him so called. Then said Gunglary, what covenant was between them, or which was the stronger? And Har answered, the sons of Bor slew Imir the giant. Lo, where he fell, there gushed forth so much blood out of his wounds that with it they drowned all the race of the rhyme giants save that one whom giants called Bergamir escaped with his household he went upon his ship and his wife with him and they were safe there but from there are come the races of the rhyme giants as it is said untold ages the earth was shaken that then was Bergamir born that first I recall how the famous wise giant on the deck of the ship was laid down. Then said Ganglary, What was done then by poor sons, if thou believe that they be gods? Har replied, In this matter there is no little to be said. They took Ymir and bore him in the middle of the yawning void and made him the earth. Of his blood, the sea, and the waters, the land was made of his flesh, and the crags of his bones, gravel and stones that fashioned from his teeth and his grinders, and from those bones that were broken. And Yafnir and Yafnar said, Of the blood which ran and welled forth fully out of his wounds, they made the sea, 
when they had formed and made up firm there together, and they could see a ring round, around her, about her, and may well seem our thing to most men to cross, to, to cross over it. Then said Thridi, that took a skull also, and made of it the heaven, and set it up over the earth with four corners, and under each corner there set a dwarf, the names of these are east, west, north, and south. Then they took the glowing embers and sparks that burst forth and had been cast out of Muspeline, and set them in the midst of the yawning void in the heaven, both above and below, to illuminate heaven and earth. They assigned places to all fires to summon heaven, some one or free under the heavens. They arrested these also to give a place, and shaped them courses. They said in old songs that from these days were reckoned, and the tale of years told. As a sin of a lost spot. The sun knew not where she had housing, the moon knew not what might and he had. The stars knew not where stood their places. Thus was it ear there was fashioned. Then said Gaglary, these are great tidings which I now hear. That is a wondrous great piece of craftsmanship, cunningly made. How is there contrived? And Hara answered, She is ring shaped without and round about. Her without a lieth deep sea, and along the strand of that sea, she gave lands to the races of giants for habitation. But on the inner earth, they made a citadel round about the world against the hostility of the giants. And for their citadel, they raised with the brows of Ymir the giant, and called that place Medgard. They took also his brain, and cast it in the air, and made from it the clouds. As he has said, of Ymir's flesh, the earth was fashioned, and it was wet the sea. Crags of his bones, trees of his air, and of his skull the sky. Then of his brows the blithe gods made, big god for sons and men. And of his brain the bitter mooded, clouds were all created. Then said Gangleri, much indeed they had accomplished them. Methinks, when earth and heaven were made, and the sun and constellations of heaven were fixed, and the vision was made of days, now whence come the men and the people of the world? And Har answered, When the sons of Bor were walking along the sea strand, they found two trees <coughs> and took up the new, took up the trees and shaped many of them. The first gave them spirit and life, the second wit and feeling, the third formed speech, hearing and sight. They gave them clothing and names. The male was called Oscar, and the female Imbla. And of them was mankind begotten, which received a dwelling place under Midgard. Next they made for themselves in the middle of the world of the sea which is called Asgard. Men call it Troy. There dwelt the gods and their kindred, and many tidings and tales of it have come to pass both on earth and aloft. There was one abode called Hidskiaf. And when all fathers sat in the high seat there, he looked out over the whole world, and saw every man's axe, and knew all things which he saw. His wife was called Frigg, daughter of Fjorvin, Fjorgvin, and out of their blood is come that kindred which we call the races of the Aesir. They have peopled the elder Asgard and those kingdoms which pertain to it, and that is a divine race. For this reason must he be called All Father, because he is father of all the gods and of men, and of all that was fulfilled of him and of his might. Therefore was his daughter and his wife. On her he begot the first son, which is Asa. Thor, streak them prolus attend him, or with he overcometh all of the things. Narfi or Narfi is the name of the giant that dwelt in Jotunheim. He had a daughter called Night. She was swarthy and dark, as befitted her race. She was given to a man named Nag Nagofari. Their son was Aldur. Afterwards, she was wedded to him. That was called Anar. Yord was her daughter. Last of all, Alps, Dayspring had her. And he was of the race of the Aesir. The sun was day. He was radiant and fair. After all, after his father. Then our father took night and day our son and gave to them two horses and two chariots and set them up in the heavens to ride around about the earth every two and a half days. Night rides before with a horse named Frosty Maid, and on each morning he bedews the earth with a foam from his bit. The horse day has has it called Sheen Maid, and he illuminate 
and he illumines all the air and the earth from his mane. Then sang Gangleri, How does he govern the course of the sun or the moon? Har answered, A certain man was named Mudafari, Mundafari, who had two children that were so fair and comely that he called his son Moon and his daughter Sun, and wedded her to a man called Glinner. But the gods were incensed at that insolence, and took the brother and sister and set them in the heavens. They caught sun to drive those, and on horses that drew the chariot to the sun, which the gods had fashioned for the world's illumination. From that glowing stuff which flew out of Spelheim, those horses were called thus, early waking all strong. And on the shoulders of the horses, the gods set two windbags to cool them. But in some records, that is called iron coldness. The moon steers the course of the moon and determines its waxing and waning. He took from the earth two children called Bill and Hyoko, Yoki. They had, they that went from the world called Birgir, bearing on their shoulders the cask called Saga and a pole Simo. The father was named Vidfinir. These children followed moon. As may be seen from the earth. Then sang Ganglary, the sun fell swiftly, and almost as if she were afraid. She couldn't hasten the course any of the moor if she feared her destruction. Then Hara made answer, It's still marvel, marvel that she hastens fiercely. Close cometh he that seeks her, and she has no escape save to run away. Then sang Ganglary, Who is he that causes her to disquiet? This disquiet? Hara replied, it's two wolves, and he that runs after her is called Skull. He fears her, and he shall take her, but he that leaps before her is called Hati Ryodvitsen. He is eager to seize the moon, and so it must be. And Sangangleri, what is the race of the wolves? Har answered, A witch dwells to the east of Midgard, in the forest called Ironwood, and that would dwell the troll women are known as Ironwood Women. The old witch bears many giants for sons, and all in the shape of wolves. And from this source are these wolves sprung. The saying runs thus from this race, shall come one that shall be mightiest of all. He that is named Moonhound. He shall be filled with the flesh of all those men that die, and he shall swallow the moon and sprinkle with blood the heavens and all the lair. Thereof shall the sun lose her shining. And the winds in that day shall be unquiet and roar on every side. <laughs> so it says of Veluspa, Eastward dwells the old one in Ironwood, and there gives birth to Fenrir's brethren. There shall spring on them all a certain one, the moon's taker and shrill's likeness. He is still a flesh of fey men, rends the gods' seats with ruddy blood gouts. Svart becomes sunlight, sunshine, and summers after. The, wealth, the weather all shifty with ye yet or what? Then Gangler he said, What is the way to heaven from earth? Then Har answered and laughed aloud, Now this is not wisely asked. Has it not been told thee that the gods made a bridge from earth to heaven called by Frost? Thou must have seen it. It may be that ye call it a rainbow. It is of three colors and very strong. It may be cutting them with more magic than other works of craftsmanship. But strong it as it is, yet must be must it be broken. The sons of Muspel shall go forth harrying, and they and ride it. Swim the hero the waters of great rivers, lest they shall proceed. Then said Glengarry, to my thinking the guards didn't build the bridge honestly, seeing that it could be broken, and they able to make it as they would. Then Har replied, The gods are not deserving of reproof because of this work of skill. A good bridge is Bifrost, but nothing in this world is such a nature that it may be relied on when the sons of Muspel go ahead. Then said Ganglary, What did all father then do when Asgard was made? Har answered, In the beginning he established rulers, and bade them ordain face with him, and give counsel concerning the planning of the town. That was in a place which is called Itafield, in the midst of the town. It was their first work to make the court in which their twelve seats stand, and another 
the high seat which all father himself has. The house is the best built on any of on earth, and the greatest without him within. It is all like one piece of gold. Men call it glad time. They made it also a sacred all. But that was a shrine which the goddesses had. And it was a very fair house. They called it Vingulf. Next to fashion the house when they placed a forge and made besides a hammer, tongs and anvil. And by means of these all other tools. Out of this they smithied metal and stone and wood. And wrought so abundantly that metal which is called gold. That they had all their household wear and all dishes of gold. And at that time it was the age, it was the age of gold. Before it was spoiled by the coming of the women, even those who came out of Jotunheim, next to this gulls and throwing themselves on their seats in old judgment, and called to mind whence the dwarves had quickened in the mound and underneath in the earth. Even as do maggots in flesh, the dwarves had first received shape and life in the flesh of Ymir, and were then maggots, but by a decree of the gods had become conscious with the intelligence of men and had human shape, and nevertheless they dwell on the earth and in the stones. Mudsugnir was the first, and Durin the second, so it says in Belusfa. Then strode all the mighty to the seats of judgment, the gods most holy, and together held counsel. Who should have dwarves shaped the peoples from the bloody surge and the blue one's bones that made many in man's likeness dwarves in the earth, as Durin said? And these, says the Sibyl, are their names. Ni, Nai, and Nidi, Nord, Nordri, and Surdri. Austri Vestri, Othjof for Dolheim, Na Nine, Nippinga, Nan, Bithyr, Bothya, Bumber, Nori, Ori, Anna, Oin, Mordjefinder, Vigir, and Gandalfer, Vindalfer, Thorin, Phil, Killy, Phil, Kelly, Vunden, Vare, Thora, Thorin, Thekir, Letir, and Vetir, Nirir, Nirir, Rekir, Redzidir. And these are also dwarves and dwell in stones, but the first in mound, mold. Drop near, Dogvari, Yur, Yugstari, Yield Yurfur, Glorin, Dori, Ori, Dufur, Anvari, Ifdili, Al, Siar. And these proceed from Sveren Saga to Aravaga, to Aravaga on your plane. And thence is Lovar come. These are their names. Skiffia, Vifia, Skalgia, I, Althia, Invigi, and Skalgia. Fair Frosty, Fidar, Ginar. Then said Ganglari, Where is the chief abode of holy places of the gods? Hyr answered, that is at the ash of Indra's hill. There the gods must give judgment every day. Then Gangleri asked, What is to be said concerning that place? Then Yafanar then said to Yafanar, The ash is greatest of all trees and best. Its slim spread out over all the world and stand above heaven. Three roots of the tree uphold it and stand exceedingly broad. One is among the Aesir, another among the Rhyme Giants. In that place where aforetime was a young void, the third stands over Niflheim, and under that root is Evinglimir, and Nidahogger gnaws the root from below. But under that root, which turns toward the Rhyme Giants, is Mimir's well, wherein wisdom and understanding are stored. And he is called Mimir, who keeps well. He is full of ancient lore, since he drinks of the well from the Gyalaharon. Thither came all father and craved one drink of the well, but he got it not until he had laid his eye in it in pledge. So says Philospa. All know I, Odin, where the eye thou hittest, and the wide renowned well of Mimir. Mimir drinks mead every morning from Valfather's wage, which ye yet or what? The third root of the ash stands in heaven and under. That root is a well which is very holy. That is called the well of Urdur. There the gods hold their tribunal. Every day the Aesir ride thither up over Bifrost, which is also called the Aesir's Bridge. 
These are the names of the Asus steeds. Slipnir is best, which Odin has. He has eight feet. The second is Gladir. The third, Gilir. The fourth, Glinner. The fifth, Skibimir. The fifth, Slivridopper. The seventh, Sinir. The eighth, Yizel. The ninth, Falanir. The tenth, Guttropper. The eleventh, Rifiti. Baldur's horse was burnt with him, and Thor walks to the judgment and wades those rivers which are called thus. Corpt and Ormt, and the Kirox twain, them shall Thor wade every day when he goes to doom. At Ash Yggdrasil, for the Aesir's bridge burns all the, with flame, and the holy waters howl. Then said Gangleri, Does fire burn over by frost? I replied, That which thou seest to be red, and the bow is burning fire. The hill giants might go up to heaven if passage on Bifrost will were open to all those who would cross. There are many fair places in heaven, and over everything there is godlike a godlike watch is kept. A hall stands there, under the ash by the well, and out of the hall come three maids who are called thus Udr, Verdandi, Skuld. These maids turn the period of men's lives. We call them Norns. But there are many Norns, those who come to each child that is born to appoint his life. These are the race of the gods, but the second are the elf people, and the third the kindred of the dwarves, as it is said here. Most sun dirt in birth, I say the Norns are, they claim no common kin. Some are of the Aesir kin, some are of the elf kin, some are the Valen's daughters. <laughs> well, I'm getting a little hoarse here. I don't feel like I can talk. For, um, I don't think I could talk very long. This is a pretty long story to tell, so I'm gonna have to do it in parts. I feel like. I'm being too scaldic with my um, words here. But anyway, you're getting the gist of it. A guy asks questions about about just simple things, like how the earth was created. Is there a divine entity? Are, do the gods really exist? So, why don't we see them? That's basically the questions we've encountered in this story so far. We still have many more questions to go on in this story. But, um, this is like the first part. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I do, I, some, I do conspiracy theory stuff. I do a lot. And, uh, and, um, well, I was, um, reading, um, one of Snorri Sturluson's, uh, uh, books yesterday and I felt like why well, don't I do a scalded version of his of his works I feel like if I you know channel my inner scald here I could you know well I don't really know what to say I, I could you know Hell, I don't know, but I thought it would be best to you know do a scaldic version of this because I invite I have some Viking ancestry and people back in their time didn't have TV they didn't have video games they didn't it would have been like wishful thinking. To look at it 
It would have been wishful thinking to, you know, be idle all the time. They were busy on the move, so they didn't have time to watch TV and all. They didn't have TV. <laughs> the scolds were their form of TV. Their form of entertainment. Skulls would tear, tell stories, sing songs, maybe rhyme a bit, maybe do some riddles, incorporate rhythm, riddles in their songs. And they would also keep the, Vi the, the Vikings up with current events and teach people about other, other people. So that they didn't feel isolated. I decided to become. I decided to you know, do a scaldic version of this. Because. Uh, I just want to preserve some history over here. Some. Per some history. Anyway if you haven't subscribed. Please do so. This is basically part one of. Maybe. Two or three parts in. I'm doing the skull version of this story. So, bye bye. Subscribe. Check the description. And skull to yell. Yeah.